Hello, welcome to Casting from Kayaks. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick video. It's part two of uh, stenciling that I had uh, done before on this lure here. And I did say that I was going to um, ponder the idea for a while and see what kind of a pattern or something that I want to do with it. So while I did that, I was thinking maybe I'll just share a little bit with what I like to use for different materials uh, for stenciling. Um, get this out of the way. I usually uh, keep my eyes open for different materials, sometimes uh, craft stores, Michaels, uh, sometimes everyday stuff at the dollar store, around the house. Uh, you, you tend to find these things in the weirdest places. Uh, sometimes even elastics. You can just take elastics and wrap around a lure and then just paint it and you get these really neat uh, effects. Uh, one of the things I do like to keep with me though is a small little assortment of uh, different softer materials because sometimes the um, the fishing lure that I'm using might have a weird shape to it or a design or pattern that um, some of the harder stencilings, uh, stencils that I've made uh, might not fit properly. So with this bag here, let's get rid of that. Uh, one of the favorite ones I like to use is the actual um, mosquito netting. At the dollar store they have those hats that have the mosquito nets that kind of drop down. Um, I like to use those because it's very soft. It doesn't have uh, any memory to it whatsoever. And you'll notice that uh, some of them have black holes in them. Um, I put those in there deliberately depending on my bait. I'm just going to show this one here. So sometimes my bait, what I'll do is I'll stick the, the screen through the mesh and then I'll start taping mesh off and pinching it off with different materials and stuff like that and holding it down. It just kind of holds on to the back of the, uh, the bait while I add different patterns to it. So this stuff here, you can probably get them in rolls somewhere. You can uh, get them at the dollar store if you don't need the hat. You can probably just cut this off of any other kind of material. But uh, it's it's pretty thin. And it's great because it actually has a, a nice little um, smaller detailed pattern for maybe uh, different size lures rather than having big lures with all the same patterns all the time. Uh, and when you stretch them out a little bit, they do stretch just a little bit more. The only problem with this though is because of the fiber, once you use it for painting, um, if you clean it off right away and let it dry, you can probably get a, a little longer use out of it. But I find that you get too much use, it does get uh, brittle, for, I guess the, the material absorbs the paint and it becomes a little brittle and sometimes when you put it over the lure, you start uh, getting some of those other colors bleeding through that you might not want. But it's still pretty good. Uh, pretty good cloth material to have and as you can see I've used this one several times hence all the little holes and some of the other colors um, one of my favorite ones and my other go-to one is if uh, you do uh, any shopping the odds are you do um, if you see those little bags of clo the um, uh, garlic those little cloves of garlic uh, they usually come in a, in a bag that's pretty stretchable and they have the cloves of, garlic, cloves of garlic and then they have it tied off with some uh, steel clip. That is also a great material. Just because a little piece like this can stretch pretty damn far. So with that being able to be stretched, instead of always having a nice pattern, you can actually stretch these or make it smaller according to the size and how much you need for your bait. You can kind of get away with maybe a couple of different patterns. Uh, it's good for the small lures and the bigger lures just because of um, how elastic, how uh, how much memory it has. And when you put it over the bait, once again, once you put it over the bait, hence like this guy here, you can see it, it just takes shape of a lot of, if I can get on here, it just takes a good shape. This it does really well. And this is probably one of the ones I might do today with this guy here while I have him down here. So the other one too is the um, loofah. If you, um, no, it's not the loofah. 
these guys here, the dollar store carries them. You can get these things anywhere. Uh, the loofahs are pretty good. They're, they have a little bit of memory to them, but they're much bigger squares. Uh, so if you have a bigger bait and you want to use some of the bigger patterns, uh, this is also a, a great idea. And again, with those loofahs, you get a, a pretty good chunk of it for a dollar at the dollar store. Uh, regardless of the color you get, you can always cut your own pieces off. And the other one is these guys here. They still have a lot of memory to them, but a different pattern on them for sure. They're almost like a chicken wire. Um, this is actually from um, a dollar store bag with um, uh, sometimes kids get those little baseball bats, the ball, um, some other beach stuff in there, summer toys in it. And that bag has all of the stuff in it. Well, I just kind of took a little piece of it just to try it out. And it's okay. I don't mind it. But it definitely gives you uh, much bigger patterns. And again, I'm sure you can buy this stuff at other places. I just kind of look for uh, stuff material around the house that I can get. And I've mentioned this before in other videos too, is seafoam. doesn't look like much, um, but, you know, Michaels carries them. A lot of craft stores carry them. Uh, they come in different sizes, sometimes pre-cut in smaller bags, uh, big bags. I like to look for the big block pieces that I can kind of look at it and see it from different angles and kind of in my mind's eye take a look and see what I can use um, that specific foam for. So with this one here, uh, once you wet them, they become very, very soft. And that's uh, one of the patterns you've seen me use in my other videos when I do my Gobi patterns is I like to use this one and I just very lightly and gingerly uh, dab the paint uh, from this from the sponge onto uh, my lures giving it a uh, different pattern all the time same technique but uh, with the sponge you can always turn it one way turn it this way turn it the other way or you can do one color with one sponge and then take a, a smaller sponge with a different pattern and just add it sp throughout so that you get uh, um, different techniques all the time. So truly, if you made a bunch of these things, they're all going to look a little different because they're, they're, it's not a, an exact template, uh, which is kind of nice. And once you're done with them, you just leave them in the water, clean them out really, really well, get all the extra color out of them, and they dry hard. And then once you're ready to use them, they're good to go again. Uh, so very versatile, uh, definitely worth the bang for your buck. And I already gone over all of these guys here with you. We've done this, we've done that. So you might have recognized this lure. I'm just going to move this paint over here. Got my paint that I was shaking a little earlier just to kind of get it ready. Move this up a little bit here. Let's see if I can drop this light if it makes any difference. Maybe. All right. So I'm just going to drop this right here a little bit. Move this up. I just had a, a sneezing fit, so I'm still uh, a little congested from it. Okay, so you probably recognize this lure from before. Uh, these are handmade stencils from a cereal box that uh, I had cut out, and I was just randomly trying uh, different patterns and stuff with it. Yeah, it's too tight. I'll move this back a little bit more. So you probably recognize it, and this is why I said uh, this would be a part two video. Uh, just because of my last video, I was trying to figure out maybe what kind of stenciling or what other color I wanted to use. Uh, because it's green, and I know the lighting sucks, I apologize for that. Um, because it's green, I want to stay with the green. I don't want to add black down the spine like I usually do. Um, I did add black around the eyes just a little bit to highlight the, uh, the actual eye. Uh, I kind of like this pattern here. It's pretty neat, very simple. And then I thought maybe what I'll do is I will use the um, mesh that I got from the garlic and I can put it over the bait. That's actually a pretty good size for the bait when I stretch it out like this because I'm not doing the whole body. I'm just going to do a little bit of the sides. I'm thinking about maybe just doing a little bit here, there, and there. And I don't know if I'm going to do the back yet. As I'm looking at it like this, I'm like, actually, the whole bait would look pretty good if I was able to do it lightly. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the, the sides first, and I'll play it by ear whether I like it or not. And the color that I'm using, again, is just the um, Liquitex ink. And this guy here is just a darker green. And I'm going to show you what I mean by... So 
So I just take the mesh and I stick it in my vise to hold on to the back of the mesh with the lure, nice and tight. And I'm just going to go like this. And again, dollar store hair clips, different lengths and that are pretty good. Just that when you're clipping these on, you just want to make sure that you don't uh, you don't clip the, the body. You don't want to scratch the paint off. And then some people use alligator clips and paper clips. I tend to have a little bit of everything. Even alligator clips will come in handy as well. You know what? That one's a goner. Now I'm not too worried about getting this 100% tight around the bottom. Just want the sides a little bit. Oh. Good thing I double checked. Put it on the wrong way. Let me see if I did it again. No, there we go. Yeah, and I see that hole? I put that hole right pretty much where I wanted to use it. So I'm not doing the whole body, but it's it's down enough to where the, the areas that I want to paint, um, it's laying flush on there. And there we go. So I'll turn on my leaky system here. Literally just adding like four drops to this. Turn my air pressure down since the last time I was cleaning it out. I always spray a little bit off to the side first just to kind of get a feel of the trigger. Make sure it gets too fast. Check air pressure. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm staying back a little further away. And I'm very lightly adding some of this pattern green.
like that. I like, I like, I like a lot. All right. And then I usually just give it a quick little shot of uh, air just to make sure that it dries quickly and nicely so that when I peel off my stencil or the, um, um, the masking, um, hopefully nothing really sticks. You know what? I'm going to add a little bit more. It's just a little darker. I thought it just had a little bit of extra darker green around the edges. Mm, it's not too bad. It's actually darker, it looks darker on the video than when I'm looking at it, than it actually probably is. And that's it. Now once I take the masking off, there's no way you're going to get it all lined up again. So once you're, you're done with it, unless you want a different pattern, you can add another mix over top of it. Oh, listen. It lights up. Wink. So, okay, I hear you. My goodness. So that's the uh, the kind of pattern. I don't know how well you can see it on the, the camera there. Again, the lighting sucks. So let's, let me see if I can turn this off. What if I turn this one on? Yeah, either way, I'm screwed. But you can uh, definitely see the very light green pattern in there. And it's a very, very small stencil. Uh, and that's uh, going to be part two of this. I don't think I'm going to add anything uh, on the top yet. If I do, it might just be, you know what, let's do it. I got some paint left. I don't want to waste it. I'm going to add a little bit of green rail on the back spine. That's going to match the, uh, the sides here. down the spine. And that, it looks, from my point of view, um, it looks much, the green that you're seeing with this crappy lighting, this is not as dark as it looks. Maybe once I download the video, it, I might see it in its true color. But to me right now, this green that I just added looks much darker in the video than it is looking at it right here in front of me. But nonetheless, I like it. I don't think I'm going to add any more to it. 
I'm just going to leave it just like this. So I've actually stayed away from actually always adding black down the spine. I thought I'd just do something with a little bit of a different color to kind of blend it in. And around the stent, the first stenciling of the black, I just added some green and then I added a little bit of the darker green uh, just to highlight a little bit of the shape of the, the first stenciling. And that is it. And I think, uh, I think this one's done. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any comments, let me know. Cheers.